So whatever uh, we do to our flowers, it's good to keep in mind that we're going to do it three times. Uh, unless you have some interesting thing you're trying to do where they're not the same. And so when I do my satin stitching, and then later when I do my beading, I'm not going to do a super dense uh, plan all in one neighborhood on one flower and then realize that I'm going to tire out before I get through the whole project. And so that's my philosophy, is that you uh, do what you can, but you don't overcommit. One thing that is always a nice addition uh, to a wall quilt is some beading. And uh, seed beads are effective, and you can scatter those around uh, one bead, or you can do little strings of them that you place in an artistic fashion, and that makes more uh, color in the area. And an easy way to kind of see what you like is to just take some of the beads that you have and place them on the piece and decide, you know, do you like it or not. And you can also consider using larger beads and determine if you think you'd like to put larger stones or anything like that on there. Um, but one of the things that I've kind of come to the conclusion in terms of beading is that it really isn't worth the time and the trouble to bead something that is so subtle that you have to be right on top of it to notice it. And so I go for contrast and I go for a look that you can see from at least five or six feet away, if not even further. You can get a sense of of whether you like it by looking at it that way. And then over time with experience you've just tried so many things that you really you really get faster at deciding what you like. I might like I might like these put on here directly. They're uh, yellow but they've got a bit of green in them. But the question is will they really show? It shows when you have a bunch of them like this, but would it really show if it was one bead you know, if they were scattered around and they were, it was one bead alone in different spots. And so um, that's just something that I start thinking about. And I may change my mind by the time I get there, but I start thinking about how I want to do the beading. I still think that I might want to scatter beads across my uh, sunny side up egg. And one thing I've been thinking all the way along is that these might look neat if they just kind of covered this area. And this, this wouldn't show that much because of the color. I use mostly glass beads, occasionally wood, not very often. Um, some stones, uh, you know, occasionally I'll use pearls or something from like old jewelry. So they're sort of upcycled, but I do uh, avoid plastic beads usually, although occasionally you may not really realize that the beads you have are plastic, but I use mostly glass. I've been known to say that I don't like to satin stitch. In fact, I really, really dislike it. It was making these two banners for my dad and for a friend of his for their local churches that sort of showed me that it's it's a great deal more uh, for someone who is a lazy perfectionist the way that I am satin stitching perfectly is just honestly I would rather bead or paint for five hours than satin stitch for one and so while I don't do large amounts of satin stitching in my work I do small amounts and I don't do it the way that it's often done where you're just making a perfect beautiful plump line of satin stitching. I like to use variegated threads to capitalize on the difference in color in the piece against whatever I'm stitching on. 
I like to vary my width. I like to get pretty chunky in places. I like to overlap the stitching and have little raised areas. And that's how I use it. And so that's how I'm showing you how to do it. And if you want to do just perfectly beautiful uh, long lines of satin stitching, I'm sure there are great videos on YouTube. And I hope that uh, you enjoy watching those. So different threads will stitch up differently. And I'm using my uh, machine that has the wider throat so that I can get up to five millimeters in my satin stitch. And I'm using a number 20 foot, which is an open foot. It has a nice deep groove uh, underneath it so that it can ride over your stitching. It's, it's actually called an embroidery foot, I believe. I've picked the thread that I, I like the way that it looks when it stitches in. You can see that this is getting pretty striped looking, but it, it just depends on if you are happy with that great jump from color to color. There are some things this could look really cool on. This could look really cool on something too. I tend to go more towards this, although in this case I want the more yellow colored thread. And so I'm just going to do this, and I'm not going to do really densely in one area and work my way around. I'm going to hop around, try to do about a dozen on each flower. And I don't want these to all look the same. I want them to look completely different. So let's see how it goes. So I'm okay with the way that looks, and I'm just going to add a bunch more. And I'm not going to cut my threads. I'm just going to hop around. I don't want to get too much into my area where I'm going to sew on. This is a little sloppy. I'm going to go over that part again. Taking a second pass over satin stitching is a nice way to get a nice full look. But when you're varying your width a lot, you have to try to match that or in some way go over the top in a way that makes sense. I like to end with my stitch width at zero in a point, and then I can just take a few stitches uh, pretty much all in the same place. And that's the same as tiny little stitches it seems to attach things pretty well. If you end with your stitches as wide as you can go or wider than zero, you can also stitch in one place on one side or um, in the middle of the channel. If you do that carefully, it doesn't show, but you do some way want to end your stitches so they won't all pull out. I just I'm just such a lazy satin stitcher that I really will let it be as sloppy as I think I can. So I'm just going to keep doing these. Do a little bit closer up to see if that's helpful to put in the video. And you can, it's kind of hard to back under this, so you, you can just start on the top of it. always a good idea to pull up threads so you know where that So I think I said this in the last video, but I was going to wait to do this and then the painting and then I realized that it would be so hard to paint up to this satin stitching that I better do it before the satin stitching. That's why you really need to think ahead and you need to, you need to just kind of visualize not just what you want it to look like, but the process you're going to go through so that you can think of any problems you might uh, be heading towards. I just, I'm just such a lazy satin stitcher. I'm not lazy about everything, <laughs> but there's certain things where it's just like, life is too short for me to care about this. Another consideration that might come into play is that the control for stitch width is different on different sewing machines. One of my machines, there are two buttons, and if you push one, the one on the left, it makes the stitch narrower all the way down to zero. And if you push the button on the right, it widens the stitch up to 5.5 millimeters. And this is a computerized machine and it can only go so fast. On my mechanical machine, where the control is a dial that you turn, it seems to be quicker and more responsive than the computerized version but then I don't have as wide a stitch that I can do. And in my experience, you prefer the one you're used to because when I used to use my
push button computerized stitch width and then I tried to switch over to the dial it took me a while to get used to it and I really disliked it but now that I'm used to the dial whenever I go to use the push button one it is the one that is hard for me to use. I can't say that I ever remember doing uh, satin stitching with both machines on the same piece but I thought I would show how the little ones end up looking compared to the big ones. So I can get small a lot faster with this machine and then big again. It's just a much quicker uh, change but you don't have the width and so they both have their uses and some of my stitching could be better but um, I'm going to call this good and I'm going to start thinking about attaching this to my piece and I'm going to heat set these pretty soon so that I don't accidentally forget and wash everything out because there would be no way to paint around this satin stitching without having it bleed in. But like I say, I really don't care for satin stitching. I usually don't do this much on one piece. So now it's really coming to be the time that I need to really start thinking about attaching these. So I've heat set these and they're a little smashed down right now um, from that process, but I think they'll puff back up in the laundry. But so I'm gonna set those aside and Overnight I had some ideas on uh, how to do all the different techniques and still have this piece make sense. And so what I'm going to do is to punto in the leaves and I might position them so more shows than what I've been showing so far. And I'm going to do the holes in the background here. And I think that when we add the beading and our irregular and our irregular edge that I'm about to cut right now and then put these leaves off the edge. I think that'll be everything that I said we were going to do. And so the first thing I'm going to do is trim my edge. So I'm thinking of doing my binding so that it's half an inch or maybe even a little bit an eighth less three eighths of an inch wide. Okay so I'm trimming around my piece and I'm going to make sure that anywhere where the batting is shorter my batting only comes to here. If the batting is shorter than the edge of the work, I'm going to cut at the batting because I don't want to have my edges be thin. So this needs to be cut down a little bit so that the batting is really going to show right inside there. And I want my, my edge to be irregular, but it doesn't need to go too crazy. And I would say that's especially true on the top. If we have areas that really notch in, we want to make those along this bottom. You know, if you have an area where your stitching isn't as good as the rest, if that gets cut off, that's fine. That's a good way to do it. You know, and you could make a plan, you could mark this before you cut it. There are different ways you could approach this. The top, we don't want to have too wavy. We're already going to need to sew our sleeve on by hand, both sides, because of the top. And we don't want to make it so that it has parts that flop down. So we want it to be obvious that it's not square, but also pleasing to the eye and really feel that starch in there. Okay, so here's where my batting is short on this end. Okay, so see I have batting showing everywhere and if I didn't I would trim a little. In fact, right here. Trim a little bit more. Okay, here is my trimmed piece and I can notch a little more deeply in some places later if I want to. But basically I'm going to be sewing on my flower and flowers and I'm going to try to not make them too big because I feel like they've they're really quite large for my background. And I'm just drawing around just to kind of give myself something to remember what I'm doing and 
not just get lost stitching because I know that when I'm stitching I like to just stitch and stitch and stitch. Here I spend some time trying to decide exactly what I think this is going to look like and I think it is a good idea to let things rest. You know, to let things rest over a weekend or come back to them even a month later sometimes. Uh, other times, you know, we're really inspired to keep going, but sometimes a little rest is good and a little planning and just thinking about it. I've been experimenting with how to attach these and one of the things that I think is that you want to attach the center of your flower and I've just tacked it with needle and thread by folding both pieces back and coming through and taking a big pinch of fabric and I've done that in three or four places on each flower center from the underside. And you could also use glue or some kind of fusible. You might be able to use a very sturdy kind of basting two-sided tape. Personally I feel better about stitches so I've tacked mine in there and because this is getting kind of heavy. I want to make sure I don't have any pins under any of the leaf area that I'm going to sew. And I've moved my leaves around quite a bit to have more showing. And I've got uh, my flowers placed. I was considering having them overlap and then I decided not to. Because that's again going through all the thickness that I'm trying to not uh, have this project need. So my flowers are pretty big. And I know I want to go into these corners as much as I can so it's not too star shaped. This one where I stitched twice is going to be the biggest problem and I'm going to come around my edges and try to make these sort of petal shaped. Now I'm going to free motion this but you know if you're not uh, really confident about your free motioning it would be perfectly reasonable to uh, use your regular foot and just stitch around and then maybe you could you could do it with a nice gentle arc or you could try to put a little wiggle in your stitching, it's up to you. This is the middle flower, which of course is the hardest one. So I go around more than once and I overlap my stitching so that I won't have just straight lines uh, when I go to paint. And I'm using a thread that's similar to the one that I stitched on the brick uh, with before which was orange and yellow and white and this one is yellow and white and I get that tacked on and I try to make petal shapes so that they're not too objectionable and of course I'll trim this in the manner that we always do taking note of any little problems that I'd like to fix with the further uh, steps down the road and there it is I think it'll look a lot better once we start working on the leaves which we'll do when we pick up with the next video on this we're going to sidestep first and do another stitch patterns and maybe even a couple other supplementary videos. Thanks.